everyone here. And um, thank you, Muhammad Trifus, for inviting us back once again. And I'll start with a dedication. May all that I say and all the physic that we gain bring Nahat Ruach to Hashem Yibach, services foot for Kalal Yisrael, and invoke Rachamei Shemayim for all those in need of Yeshuot and Nechamot. Amen. In particular, it should stand as a Lui Nishmat, uh, the Rebetzin, uh, dear Rebetzin, Alea Shalom, Rebetzin Heni Machlis, um, may her light of Torah and goodness and kindness continue to shine upon us and guide our ways. Amen. Amen. Um, this, this class is being sponsored by Zat Hashem Lui Nishmat Aharon Ben Betzalel, Alav Shalom, by his dear wife. May um, all the chizik that we gain um, serve as an aliyah for his neshama amongst all the tzaddikim who have departed from this world. Amen. Okay, so we're um, doing something a little bit different today. We're going to be talking about color psychology and color therapy and um, discuss the beauty um, behind and around the concept of color and they're going to paint our lives god willing differently uh through what we're going to learn um tie it into the three weeks you would think to yourself how is she going to do that how is she going to tie color into the three weeks like what are we supposed to be doing during these three weeks painting where are we painting so this is actually um somewhat of an offset and a, a varied angle on uh, the energy um, workshops that um, with Hashem's loving kindness, I've been running over the past couple weeks and uh, will continue to run over God willing the next couple of months. And um, I have the flyer here um, for those online. You'll be able to, do you see it? You'll be able to find it um, on the website. And the energy, the way these energy workshops work is that um, for those who know, those who don't know, um, I am a certified energy practitioner and therapist for the last couple of years. And I work on um, balancing people's energy lines, uh, removing blockages, increasing positive energy so that they radiate positive messages out uh, to the world. I, I have to tell you, because just today I was speaking to someone who I, we literally had the slip to do, uh, I did two sessions for her. I felt she needed about five and we did two sessions for her. And on um, the questionnaire, she basically wrote, well, I'm not quite sure, you know, what my blockages are with my mother, but I feel that there's definitely blockages there and I'm not quite sure where it comes from. And, um, after two sessions, uh, today I spoke to her to do the third session, and I'm like, so hi, how are you? And just her hello sounded different. I said, wow, you sound alive. So she said, no, you don't understand. That last session brought so much insights. Like She said, as we were doing the session on the phone, I felt this weight just being lifted off of me because we came to such a level of awareness of the subconscious blockage that she had in her and what we began to see and this is what is amazing about energy work is that what the blockage that you have stuck in you at one point in your life becomes the law of attraction that keeps running after you for all of your life so um i don't want to go into particulars regarding her case she, whatever i don't want to give stuff away but it, the bottom line is let's just say as a child you weren't validated right then all of your life it's just going to be this ongoing sort of and that's part of the soul's tikkun i'm not don't get me wrong it's not like the energy work is just going to wish wash everything away but it gives we, we get a greater sense of understanding clarity and coping skills to say okay this is my soul's mission i understand this is my soul's mission is that i have to constantly work on ways for instance to validate myself and to feel good about myself and so okay i understand but what this does is when you begin to understand the psyche of how things tick and how you attract it, you become more aware of the, of, of the signs, the impending signs coming on you. And you, it's like you almost are able to hold up a sign and say, wait, I know, it's, I know you're there and, and I want to now stop you and, or I want to conquer you or I'm going to feel more stronger to fight against you. And, and that's what this is about. So. That's why I feel personally that energy um, work has actually increased my amuna in levels that 
I, I'm, I'm sure have uh, superseded where I was, you know, uh, before I started doing this. So I really wanted to share sort of like an introduction because I know women are also kind of leery. What is energy work? And, and is it also in accordance to the halacha? And, um, and Baruch Hashem, I have a lot of rabbeim that I'm speaking to and that have, you know, uh, gone over and, and checked that the method that I use and have also guided me this you should use this you shouldn't use be careful of this careful of that you know so I have my guidance levels thank God and I think that this is definitely a powerful powerful um, way of being able to heal ourselves and I do believe that part of the journey to receiving Mashiach particularly during the three weeks is to heal our emotions and to be able to feel a, a taste of geula while you're in the galut. That's what Hashem wants. Hashem doesn't want us to only get the ultimate sense of geula when geula hits the scene. Hashem wants us to yearn for it. How do you get a person to want something? They say, well, I don't know how this tastes like. And you're like, here, have a taste, right? You want your child to get to know what vanilla tastes like instead of chocolate all the time. Taste it. How are you going to know if you like it or if you don't, if you don't taste it? Hashem says, I want you to taste geula. If you don't taste ka'ula, how are you going to know you really want it? How are you going to dive into me and ask me and yearn, increase your chuka, increase your desire for ka'ula unless I get you to taste what it feels like? So be having that experience of ka'ula in its minuscule way through Shabbat, through Yom Tov, through Tshuva, through Yom Kippur, through all the Chagim, through even the three weeks, right? That all enables us to be, to be able to, to get a sense of, oh, this is what galut is, and this is what gaula is, and then to say, I'd rather have a gaula. <laughs> I'd rather not be in galut. But you have to have both of them. You have to know what it's like in order to really experience it. So that's why it is, of course, very important that we try in our own way, however much we can, to achieve our level of gaula, um, even here in the galut, as much as possible. So... Um, how does color play into this whole mechanism? And here, there are just so many wonderful, I was telling Zahava yesterday, at one o'clock, I literally picked up the pen and I just started writing. And my, the pen filled up pages of, of this class um, from a couple of different things that I know, whatever I know about color and what I've used, and I use a lot of color therapy in my own energy therapy sessions. But I felt like Hashem just put all of this and tied it all together for the three weeks that the messages are profound. I hope you'll like it as much as I liked it at 1.30 in the morning in my own quiet home. Um, so what is color? Color, basically, um, is a light beam. It's a light wavelength that comes out from the sun. It travels to us, okay? The interpretation, the way we see color in life is the light travels from the sun, gets absorbed, these light wavelength, the wavelengths get absorbed into the object as we're looking at, let's say, this bowl. And there's an atomic structure, a molecular structure that makes up the form of a bowl, okay? As the light hits the atomic structure of the bowl or of the item or the person or whatever it is that we're looking at that we see color in, there is going to be a match, a meeting match. This is one of the profound and extraordinary fascinating facets of energy medicine is that it teaches us how much Hashem wants shalom in this world. So one of the basic um, stances of energy medicine is you resonate, you radiate a certain message, and nida keneged nida, measure for measure, whatever it is that you radiate out, I'm good, I'm not good, I'm deserving, I'm not deserving, I'm happy, I'm not happy, I'm smart, not, I'm angry at the world. I, all the messages, all those subconscious messages that go on in your brain, they're being communicated to this electromagnetic field around you, and that's what people understand about you. And I say the most profound idea where you can feel it the most is when you send out a resume, resume, a shidduch resume or a resume for work, right? You send out a resume and it's on somebody's desk and the person decides to pick up the resume paper and they see the name and da 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 da. What are they actually getting from that resume paper? It's only just a bunch of words. What idea are they getting when they read the resume? So we think it's the body and text of the words. But I hate to tell you, it has nothing to do with that. 
you could write down that you are a graduate of Harvard University and received a million uh, honors and full scholarship and best top in the class and all that. But what, who's to say you against someone else? It's not just maybe the, the facts play some part of it, but what really that person, the interviewer, reading your resume, you know what they're really picking up? They're picking up your energy line at that moment as they read this resume. The How energy the, the energy, so if that's very interesting, I feel it's actually a mixture of both. I feel like it, there's also a part of you as you wrote it, and there's also a part of you as you are right now at the time of the reading. So in other words, because energy is also who you are, but it's also what you're sending out today. As we clear our energy lines, our energy changes, right? The messages we send out are different. So when they're reading it, as they're reading it, what they're saying to themselves is, hmm, this sounds like a very confident guy. Wait a minute, where do you see the word confidence? Anywhere in between, what, the way that I wrote, the words that I chose? Isn't, they, you get a feeling when you read a resume. And same thing with Shad Hanit. She's going to read a resume. She'll be like, this one, oh, I remember I had a feeling from that guy I read two days ago, the resume that someone said to me, oh, oh I did move the chair right now. I'm so sorry. I just realized that. Um, and, and, and so it's the feeling that's invoked, the energy vibes that's invoked in that person reading it at the time, the mess, that's the message that they're, that they're getting. So we're all the time, I call us transmitters and receivers. I love you. I love you. I could say to my child, yeah, I'm proud of the 60 that you received. I, of course, I know you tried your best in getting the 60 mark that you got. Again, if I'm really happy, then that'll come out. That message will come out very clear. So it's not what I'm saying. It's not even the, necessarily the tone of voice or the body language. It's also what they, what, and I just actually saw um, Rabbi Rieti Shlita send a mess. Um, he was talking about Chinuch and he sent out a clip that was just running in WhatsApp through uh, a chat called Twisted Parenting. I don't know if anyone ever heard of it, but I belong to it. And it basically talks about the idea of how to be Mahana children, particularly now with, with problematic teenagers and children who are quote unquote, off the derech, quote unquote, I, I don't like to use it, but that's what it's called. And he, and Rabbi Rieti said these exact words that I'm just saying now, how are you able to really um, bring, bring back the love into a relationship with your child if you're so disappointed, so to speak, in them? And it, forgive me if it's not the exact words, but he basically, the idea was he was saying is, how do you really think about that child? And based on how you could say what you want to that child, if you don't really appreciate the battle and the, and the difficulty of that child to be on that spiritual level that you think that child should be on at that time, that child could be kissed and hugged and, and done a lot of things. But if that's not what you're really thinking about that child, that's what that child picks up is what you're thinking. So he was saying, change the way you think about the child, and then you will have a different relationship with that child. And so that's exactly what I'm saying here. You can write a, the best resume, the best shit of resume, but if you aren't feeling comfortable with your skin, in your skin, that is what's coming out. And so the Shachanit is going to take a resume of someone who has lack of self-confidence and say, oh, maybe this one would be good with that one because they both sort of resonate the same feeling inside of me, right? That's what it's all about. So there's all the, so why am I saying that? Okay, now I know I'm going back to my original thought. So the whole idea of life is I'm, re I'm resonating, I'm sending out wavelengths of a certain message out there. For instance, I'm sending out hopefully now a message of Hashem is great, Hashem I love you. You're all getting that hopefully into you. Whether you listen to the words or whether you don't, you're grasping, which is the beauty about coming to a live class in particular, you're grasping the energy and my rut zone and my intention in between even the words, right? Which is why I can't sell you something if I have... Um, I'm sure I have issues with my own emuna on my own level. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying if I'm telling you 
you know, it's horrible to eat chocolate. Don't eat chocolate. Da, 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 da. I'm pounding you with don't eat chocolate. And I go home and I eat chocolate and I don't really believe any of that that I'm saying. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not trying to stop eating chocolate, but if I don't really believe that you should stop eating chocolate, you will sit here and you'll be nodding your head and she's really right. It won't stick with you. You'll go home and you'll feel like eating chocolate also because it won't stick with you because you didn't really hear that from me. What you really heard were words, but what you really got was my energy vibe saying, don't buy what I'm saying to you. I don't really believe it anyway, right? So it's all about resonating a message. Now, if I'm resonating out, I love Hashem, Amuna, Amuna, Amuna. Now you have a choice. You have a choice sitting in this room to say, hmm, I agree or hmm, I don't. Now, this is what happens. What we don't see here going on in the room, there's clash fights between energy lines. I'm saying out a message, you're having your doubts, Depending on who is the stronger energy line, which wavelength is sending out a stronger message, that is the one who will win. So it's me against, I guess, hopefully people are on my team too, and you know, also resonating the same amazing message. What does that mean? It means that all of our lives are about meeting levels of energy resonance. It's about trying to harmonize our energy line. If you're feeling one thing I have, and I'm feeling something else, we have to do something to survive in that same room. You either have to go down, I have to go up. Something has to happen. We cannot be in the same room. One of us is either going to run out of the room, break something, change. It has to somehow be some sort of harmony going on that's the beauty of energy so going back to the light what happens this light is now hitting down the rays of these wavelengths of wa of waves of light are coming down from the sun and they're meeting this object called a bow now in that bowl there's a certain atomic molecular structure uh, the atomic structure is protons electrons and neutrons right as a nucleus and so on going back to biochemistry class anyone paid attention in 10th grade. And, and basically what happens there is this, whatever the atomic structure of the bowl is able to absorb, it absorbs and it gets sunken in. It gets integrated inside the bowl. Here, the light that shines is now get, it goes inside the bowl. Whatever doesn't fit, in the bowl in terms of the atomic structure, you know what happens to it? And here we go into color psychology. It gets reflected back to the person who's viewing it. What does that mean in terms of color therapy? It means if I see blue here, you know what I'm really seeing? The object is not blue. What I'm seeing is what the molecular structure rejected. It's what was not absorbed into the bowl. You all looking at me like I didn't get it. Too. I'm going to explain it on a, on a behavioral level too. Basically, what it means that, that whatever light beam could not be absorbed into the structure of that bowl, it actually gets thrown back at the person looking at it and that's the color that they see. So the color that you see is a rejection of the actual item. Yes, right, exactly. Well, right, that, that's where the color blindedness comes in is that to some degree, there's a level, oh yes, it's not there. There's some, to some degree, there's a level of variation also on the way that we perceive different colors. Now, certainly pink is pink is pink is pink, but some might see it as being soft. Some might say, no, it's too, too dark. Everybody has a different perception. It depends on, and here we're gonna go into another part of it soon, on my, the retina of my eye. It depends on the receptor, the light receptors behind the retina, behind my eye. And that all goes based on my brain and my past experience and how I see the color pink in my life. 
What if I remember when I was, I always go back to the same scenario, not that I ever had a Mora Rivka, but I just like that name. Let's just say I go back to my experience. Some, I didn't have this experience when I was in kindergarten. And Mora Rivka, who was wearing a pink shirt the day that I was traumatized by her in class, I will not be able to like pink. And, and the way I perceive pink will not be the same way as someone else perceiving pink. So it also depends on my past memories and my past associations in terms of the way I interpret color. There's a universal idea of how, and we're gonna go through that, but all in all, it largely depends on my perception and my associations also as well. What do you mean the light that's subjective? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, basically what it means is again, think about, think about, I'm sending, I'm sending um, a round ball, okay, into a very tiny cup, right? The, the vessel is not prepared to receive a different odd shape or a different shape than, the, than what, what's meant to go into it, right? In a way, that, that's the easiest way to explain it. In other words, if I'm sending um, lines, some I'm saying, right? But it really, what's meant to go in there are squares, you know, small little square, or the opposite. I'm sending squares, but there's only a little peephole. Then it's never going to be able to fit in to the piece, to the piece, right? To the emptiness of, of the structure. So that's basically what it is. In other words, Hashem created the world in such a way that everything has an atomic structure. Again, everything has its specific mechanism and structure. And then within that, it can only absorb so much. And Hashem created and designed objects in such a way that certain objects can only absorb certain wavelengths of light and therefore project only certain colors. But it's different. It's, it's, no, no, it's not that I'm, you're gonna see blue and I'm gonna see purple. I might see blue in a different shade or in a different way, or I may associate it with a different, but we're all going to see blue. We're all going to see, again, unless there's a colorblind issue, which as I haven't mentioned, that's something else. Oh, that's what I meant. Oh, I've never heard of that. Really? Oh, I've never seen that. That wasn't a joke? I don't know. It's put on like, no, I see pink. Oh, I have to try that out now with my husband. I have to see if we're seeing eye to eye. That's a very interesting thing. Oh, that I would have never imagined that people see actually things different, different that and way. The man, they're saying, no, you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, they're always blaming us. Since Adam Rishon, they've been blaming us. Yeah, it was that woman. She made me eat the tree, the, the uh, apple. She made me eat the tree. She made me eat the apple. She made me eat apple. You know, they blame us on everything. That's okay. We're kind of used to absorbing the slack from them. But anyway, so listen, listen to how, but what, what I get from this. I'll tell you what I get from this. So the first thing I think about when I think about the rejection of the object is I took it to, a, I didn't take it, Hashem wrote it down for me yesterday and took it to a different level. And I started thinking to myself, wait a minute, does that mean that what Hashem gives to me, if my vessel is not, I'm saying this slowly because this I, I have to process this. Does that mean that what Hashem gives to me and to you and to us, if our vessel at, 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 um, atomically is not structured, is not prepared to receive it in the way that Hashem intended to give it to us, does that mean we also reject it? You understand where I was taking, where, where, where what Hashem, he, in other words, I felt like Hashem was saying to me, go beyond the color here. This is reality you're talking about. Can you explain how that from right, the said, blockage? Uh, so, so no, here we're talking about prepare. I'm going to go through a couple of steps and then hopefully you'll be able to see the whole picture of this. What I'm saying to you is everything in life, Hashem gives us abundance. How much abundance? To the measure that you want to receive that's the measure Hashem gives. Hashem says, you want more? Fadal, I'll give you more. I'll open up. I'll give you as much as you want. There's a whole empire of delight that I want to give you. You're limiting me. I'm en sof, Hashem says. I'm en sof. En sof means anything. It's not just for Purim. It's anything.
anything you want. Just ask. So Hashem says, I'm giving you. What do you need to receive what Hashem wants to give? A vessel. You have to say, I'm opening up my hands now in front of you. As you say in Berkat Amazon, I'm opening here. I'm here. I'm ready to receive whatever you give me because everything you give me, including the annoying husband and the children who wake me up in the middle of the night and then the, the minus in my bank account, everything you give me. I'm not going to pick and choose. Everything that you give me, I want. Everything. Because if I believe that everything you're giving me is good, then I want everything. It's not that I, oh, no, just give me this and just a minute and, and a lot of zeros, you know, plus. No, everything that you want to give me. I want everything. Potech yadecha means everything. My hands are open. So if I'm in that level of a vessel and I'm ready to receive everything, Hashem gives me everything. But what if inside of me, while I'm saying it, there are parts of me are saying, well, maybe I really don't want that husband. Like, I really don't want that, that, you know, the car, like this, the 1989 car. I'd really like to have a 2018 car. If that's what's going on, the vessel inside of me as I'm opening up my hands is not really the same vessel of Hashem. Hashem says, I want to give you everything. You're already in your subconscious mind saying, no, there are a couple of things I'd rather not have. Do you understand? So Hashem's throwing down, so to speak, all this abundance, and then there's a a closure here and a lockdown there and a lid closed over here and the garbage bag is closed there and every there's closures all over the place so Hashem is sending it and there's no it doesn't fit in it doesn't fit in so what do I what is that called on my behalf rejection there's block. The, the, a rejection blockage however you want to call it I'm rejecting because my vessel is rejecting part of that light that comes in. Do you see how that relates now to that whole idea of the color? I'm rejecting, and so now I'm taking it now to step number two. You thought that was, you didn't understand that. Wait until we get to step number two. So if I am not taking it in and I'm rejecting, what's, what's rejected? Light. Mm -hmm. Light, right, light is a manifestation of everything. You're absolutely right. Light is a manifestation of divine, divine uh, presence. So I'm rejecting, bless you, I'm rejecting light. I'm rejecting a form of, of goodness. And now, go, let's take it one step further. Where is this rejection experienced? What did I say before? That which I see... The color that I see is the rejection. What does that mean for me? It means for me that what, if you didn't think you were coming to such a deep class tonight, huh? you, were, you were having more coffee. That what it really means, I had mine, so I'm wide awake, so I'm you know, giving you my energy vibes of caffeine and, and energy. And I, you know, I didn't sleep very much, but that's okay. And so I, I, what it basically means is I'm seeing the rejection. I, thank you. You got you. You brought it down to the nefesh of ad, the nefesh hadam. The 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 Jew, Jewish psyche is such. If I'm not able, if my vessel is not situated and synchronized with the light that it receives from Hashem, which is ensof, an abundant, boundless, limited amount of goodness and light and clarity, light is everything. Light is Hashem in its fullest ability that we can understand in this world. If I'm not prepared to receive it, what do I see? I see rejection. It, come, it looks like a color. It looks like even that is the essence of the product. When I'm looking at the bowl, I see blue. You can't convince me that's, that's blue. So for me, inside, yeah, yeah. inside, oh, I'm not colorblind. Outside, it's green with beautiful colors. Who made that beautiful bowl, by the way? Uh, see, he's getting Torah Anytime coverage. We should maybe show a picture of the bowl so they don't think, let me have a picture of the bowl so that I can really, so the ladies and uh, everyone is going to be watching it. Do you see it? That's the green. That's the blue. Okay? So the, the bottom, <laughs> everyone needs to see. Everyone will be like, what bowl are they talking about? Um, but the bottom line is, is if I can't receive 
all of the light waves in its fullest magnitude of Hashem is sending down, my eyes, my perception, my awareness. <laughs> um, what did you refer to? <laughs> okay. So everyone, I'm trying to come here, my Bluetooth speaker. Um, so, uh, huh? Well, you, you'll turn on after if we're going to do the... the Waiting for pain. Maybe they don't just say like that. So the bottom line is what if I am rejecting this is this is the, the Sheol tonight, basically, from the from uh, the three-week perspective, is as I am now at rejecting, so to speak, my vessel is not equipped to receive everything that Hashem wants to give me. Hashem is giving me down all these rays of light, tons of abundance, tons of love, Shefa, Parnassa. Everything. He's giving me everything in, in the form of a dark cloud inside, inside the piercing of the this. You wouldn't think to go and and, and open up a water. I mean, take a watermelon and just eat it. You know, there's a peel, right? You have to know everything has its peel. So Hashem is sending me all this stuff in the form of difficulties and challenges and minuses in the bank and annoying neighbors and a husband. Blah, blah, blah. And he's sending me all of this stuff, and it's all good but I'm rejecting it. So all now that is being related to in my eye, that's being transmitted in my brain cells is Hashem's rejecting me. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Anytime you say, I don't want this in my life, you're rejecting, complaining. Okay, so let's take the example of the car. You're okay. driving your 1989 car and you're driving it for one year, for two, for three, four, five, you're accepting that you're driving it, you're okay with it, you never complain, but your new car is not coming. Mm -hmm. And it's five, six, seven years later, what's... What is it? Maybe the metal metal in that young uh, kids for cars car, which I had the scoop to have uh, many times driven on cars like that, thank God. Maybe the metal in that car is holding some sort of spark of a soul that belongs to you that in that car as you're driving it down Naha Kishon and Naha Dolev and you're listening to Divrei Torah and you're saying things and you're thinking words of Amuna, that metal, that you think that the metal is metal. I mean, it's metal. What is, there's sparks of something in there because energy is in everything. Divine light is in everything in different levels. Maybe there's some part of your soul that's stuck in that metal of that car that needs your attachment to it. I'm, I'm going off the whim. It sounds crazy. Obviously, there has to be... Getting into that car. And you're like, I've had an... Uh -huh. And you don't want to be in it. And you can't stand the energy in it. And then you get out and you feel like, oh, okay, I can breathe. Then you get in and you feel sick and you don't want to be in it. So what... What if I told you that inside that car there is um, enough medicine to keep you going for the next 10 years. Wouldn't you like that car? Wouldn't you find ways of liking that car? You would find plenty of ways of liking that car. It's all perception. It's all perception. If I go in that car and I feel like a loser because I'm driving that car because everyone else has a great car and why can't I have air conditioning? It's 100 degrees out. Why do I have to hear my muff muffler? Why do I have to leave a smoke train after me? Why, why? It's all about my perception of myself sitting in a car. Listen, you cannot, I, 100%, you cannot compare even, I, I know the feeling of me sitting in a kid's for car car and me sitting in a you know, new 2018 Toyota, right? When I'm putting my hand, right, as I'm driving, I'm sorry, I'm putting my hand, I'm not in England, I'm right, and I'm driving that car, I'm feeling pretty good about That's myself. Energy. You're feeling your self-esteem, you feel better. Right? But that's also energy. Absolutely. So why would you go? Why do I think? I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it to me, not to you. Me, me. I'm talking to me or re, listen. Me. Why do I have to feel, and I'm telling you this is a big mavak in my own life. Why do I have to feel like this is not an amazing gift that I have a car? That I don't have to wait like other people for a bus 19 for half an hour when it's 100 degrees and they don't have a car. No, Why can't I feel appreciative of that? Driving the car, thanking the shed when you see these poor moms pushing the double stroller. Right. The hill, you can thank the shed. Thank you for this car, but I don't like it. <laughs> thank you for this car, but it's making me sick. Like, and we do you know what I mean? To the, the shop because it's 1989. Right. So maybe I have to look at my master money because if it's going to the shop, 
then maybe I also have to look at that too. There's a message there. In other words, all I'm saying to you is there's a message in there. This has nothing to do with color yeah. therapy, but that's okay. <laughs> the, 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 there's a message in the darkness of my beingness in a car, and I'm not dismissing at all what you're saying. I'm with you 150%. I know what it's like. I'm not saying I don't understand, but I'm saying to you, I also say there's something in this car that I have to learn about myself that I would not be able to know that existed in me if I had a Toyota, I'm just making a personage for Toyota, a 2008, I would not find me in that other car. There's something that this car is teaching me about me that once I get to learn that shiur and I pass the test, that's when I'll graduate to my better car. But so long as I need, I, I need that car, there's something there, there's a message there. Same thing with my marriage, same thing with every challenge I have in life. So long as I don't embrace the message, and there is a message in that clunky car of mine, then I, and I'm essentially rejecting, and I'm not going to be able to appreciate, because there's a message that Hashem says, you, honey, I love you, but you really got to learn this lesson before I get rid of that car and graduate you to a better car. And until you, and if you don't know what that message is, you just say to Hashem, there must be a message here. I would appreciate if you'd let me know before this, the winter comes so I can have a decent heater in the car or whatever it is. Like you can make a joke out of it, but you could say, Hashem, I realize, okay, what's waiting for me? How many sparks? I'll get the buckets. I'll get the team. We'll collect the sparks and be done with it. Give me a new car with new sparks. But again, embrace that there's something there that you need to, learn from this place. I'm sorry. What about the idea of meditation? Right. So I have certain people in my life, like whatever, family, and then it's you know, toxic or even if they're not even toxic, just don't feel right when you're around them. Right. Um, okay. So you're not required to love and want to be next to everyone all the time. You're required to not hate anyone. Okay, so you, uh, again, if, if it's uh, you could, I have to be careful about this. I'm giving you my thoughts. I'm not telling you about halachically. I don't really understand the nuances maybe as much as I should when it comes to that question. I'm going to tell you what I think I would do, and I, I tell not even that I think I do. I, this is what I do. Okay, I'm gonna, if I'm if I feel that there's certain people whose energies don't suit me well and don't bring me to better places. What I do is I make sure that I, first of all, pray for them. I ask Hashem what I'm supposed to learn through them, and I stay away. Stay away? I do stay away. Yes, I absolutely do stay away. If I feel like there's something there that's not influencing me, but I don't hate, I got, if there's any hatred in my heart, I, I, I right away move it. I do thank Hashem for sending that person, for teaching something. There's something there that I need to learn. I ask Hashem, what is it that I need to learn? But in the meantime, certainly, I, I, would, I would definitely, you know, not look to be rubbing elbows and meeting them at cocktail parties every Monday and Thursday because I'm not there also there. When I, when I was listening to you about the car and why am I, I was thinking about, in my case, acceptance. Right, exactly. I have to accept right. the situation, yes. places, and things. Right. So please turn the camera on her because I think she's getting the class beautiful. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm saying like you got it down, you got it down, Pat. That's exactly what I this don't is. like. I don't have right. I don't do acceptance very mm -hmm. well, but you helped me with that because I have to accept that I'm not right. you know, with. So that's I just wanted to share. That's what I was feeling. Yes. I have to accept the car. The husband, oh, yeah, I don't like right. the, the fact that I'm 10 pounds overweight right now. Full of yes. Storage and, you know, I have to say yes, that there is a, yes. this is the best I have to do right now. And eventually, right. the house will be ready one of these years. Right. And, but I have to accept. Right. I have a roof under my head right. with air conditioning. Absolutely. And See the good. I'm heating in the heat. I'm heating the winter, and you know, and I, I have to say thanks to Hashem for what you're getting me because some people are sleeping in the street and they don't have what I have. There's always, there's always fun. And you just, but I forget about it. You, you me, all the rest of us. That's why we're here tonight. <laughs> right, so right. It was 
want to commit the family to this class. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, you Hashem. know, the roof under my head that yeah. I have. Every night before I, I go to Thank sleep, you please so God. Much. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Uh, every night before I go to sleep, I literally I try so hard. I, oh, I, I how tired I am. I force my eyes with toothpicks to stay open. I look and I, I look at my husband. I'm like, Thank you, Hashem. My husband's in bed. I mean, I go, I zoom in, close my zoom into my kids' room. Thank you. That Benjamin's in his bed and Davidi's in his bed and Chai Rivka's in his bed and Nathaniel. Uh, in my, my Kala and my, my daughter Shani and her, my Khatan and my grand, they're all in, nobody's in the hospital, no, everyone's fine, thank you Hashem, everyone's fine, thank you Hashem, my door is closed, thank you for my blanket, thank you, I, like I try until I fall asleep, but but that's how I, you know, just simple, 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 simple. You know, I do, absolutely, absolutely, thank you, with me, with my MS, are you kidding me, I'm all the time, thank you Hashem that I walked today, thank you Hashem, I didn't but have to tell them. Uh, I don't want to magnet, except today, but hope for, for a better, better tomorrow. tomorrow. That's right. what I'm more Somebody that reads those it. magnets. <laughs> <laughs> some people that take, uh, you know, be happy with your lot as this is what I have. Yeah. Uh, that, but look at that. Even just there's that, there's that no tone. No right. But listen to that tone. It's like, thank you for what I have. Yeah. I wish I had more, but thank you for what I have. They don't even say I wish I had more. There's just people it's like a, I see them. They're just, I know. Oh, I don't, you know, it's fine. Right. They have no ruts on. They're just like this. I know. And it's, That's why we're here hopefully to all learn together. I fall into that trap. You, we all do. I'm teaching this to teach myself. I sit here in the room like everyone else. I say I fall into these traps all the time like everyone else. It's a, it's a human condition to fall there. I don't even blame them. We're all there. And anyone who says they don't fall there is not being truthful with themselves. There's not a person out there who doesn't fall to that trap. The tzaddikim are tzaddikim. Wow, we're benonim if we're lucky. You know, we're, we're trying. I'm a little confused. You're saying, okay, if we could have the recognition of people on the street. I read in one, I forgot which book it was, Esther Young Rifle's book. Right. I read many years ago. And she was saying the story of Spina Hanay, a lady came to, you know, she saw the one that people was like, Found herself upset, and she goes to ask her Can I help you? Ask the shir. She goes, I shouldn't complain. I guess it can sound silly, and other people, I know what I'm going to complain about. Other people be jealous to have. Mm. And then, and goes, I never went into the trap of be happy you have shoes because somebody else does it. If your shoes are too long, you have to get the new shoes. Not, oh, I saw the person. Well, that's that's no, where that's what she just, said. No, this, like, Thank um, you. She she said, said, great, um, Rachel. Okay, you're saying. I should be happy to have the air conditioning where I have a roof because other people don't, but that doesn't help. If you're not happy with your home, you're allowed to start for more. You can't so I, so I think pay. the opposite. They complemented each other. Take my chef for all the bad that you gave me. That's what I want from you. But well, wait a minute, but you didn't listen, right? Accepting today, but praying for a better tomorrow. If so I should say Hashem, right. he gives us. For now, this moment. This moment. Why not? I'm saying, okay, so then let me explain that. So when I say thank you, Hashem, for the broken car and for the messed up, uh, you know, even childhood that I had, if I'm saying thank you, it means I'm saying to Hashem that right now, as I have this moment of clarity of knowing that you love me and you sent this to me for my goodness, I'm also saying to you, I pray that there's going to be a better time, a different time where I'm going to be able to serve you from a different place. But right now, where I am right now, this is exactly what I need. If I didn't need right now exactly what I have, the broken air conditioning, the broken car, the husband that annoys me, all the things that I have, if I didn't need it, you wouldn't have given it to me. So I thank you, Hashem, for giving it to me because right now, at this moment, whatever the time is, that's what I, at 9 p.m., I need that right now. But that doesn't mean, Hashem, that you have infinite possibility. It doesn't mean in two minutes from now, I can't be as good of a Jew, as good of an Eved, as good of a servant to Hashem, serving you with a husband who does appreciate me, serving you with a 2018 car in my parking. It doesn't mean I, don't, I shouldn't ask for it. And how do we know this? Because Hashem says that if I didn't, want you to try to change something, then why would I say to you and instruct to all, every single one of Tudavin? Right. Why does Hashem ask us to, for tefillah? 
Hashem says, I want you to come and ask me for something better because I realize you're in a lowly existence and you might perceive it as it being not good. So you perceive it as being not good. I know it's good, but your perception is it's not good. So come and tell me, you want me to change it? But while doing it, remember that it's a loving God that gave you this imperfected life that you think is not good for you, that you're rejecting right now. It sounds like it's, but it's not clashing. Hashem says, accept it, but come to me and ask for more. That's what tefillah is there. Tefillah is to remind, modim anachnu, on the other side is refainu Hashem It's the same mechanism in the same tefillah. You're saying thank you, and you're saying please send healing. At the same time, in the same tefillah, the same intimate gathering with Hashem and Shemon Eisleh. Ever question that? It's because we believe that right now it needs to be this way, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't ask for something better. I know you could do anything, Hashem. You can give me anything. So maybe you'll feel that I don't need that Yankee car and I can I need a better car to really serve you in, in that way. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, okay, let me just take this one step further and let me say this. Now, this is, this is the craziest part of, this, uh, of today's class. What happens with the rejection? Okay, so again, I'm seeing that which the object is rejecting and reflecting back to me. What it doesn't want, it reflects back to me. I'm talking to you from a scientific, from a physics perspective, this is what happens. As we look with our eyes inside the object, what do the eyes do? What do, what do they take the, the, with the re, what do they do with the rejection that they see? What, what do our eyes do with that rejected color that we see? The neuro, neurotransmitters of the brain take the image, take the rejection, take the color, flip it around, flip the image around in the mind. Listen to this. Flip it around, reconstructs the image in our brain, and projects a whole different item in front of us. In other words, it's a thank you. What did I just say? Anybody care to clarify? What it means is, is that the rejection that I am seeing, now because I rejected it, my eye says, oh, you don't like what you see? Let me flip it around for you and maybe get you to like it. Let me project a different image on you and maybe then you're going to like it. And so what you're, even if you do like it after that, what you're seeing is not the original thing that was given to you because it's as a result of a rejection that you, you didn't want to accept from the get-go. Does that make any more sense? <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're not dealing with it. You're not you're wanting to cope with it. You're creating... A different, a different misuse. Yeah, I think we have to turn it. Like everyone is saying, like view. That's exactly what it is. We're another. Say it again. I'm so nervous. No, no, you're really good. Whatever you're rejecting is really something I want to forbid to deal with. So your brain is creating an illusion, a different misuse, a different reality. You know, so you don't have to cope. So what you're going to do, you're like, you're like. You're taking the negative thing that you saw, right. this, this what was projected, that was negative you want to deal with. You're kind of like, like, um, how do you say uh, you're, you're, Yeah, you're, you're, processing you're, it, you're, you're processing it away and create, bring up something else. So what? You just, you, my brain know, literally flips it around. Okay, Isn't that crazy? I think this is like a magnificent class. Like, I thought Hashem like, just wrote the best class on paper at one in the morning. Like, you're rejecting the bowl, you, it, the bowl's there, and it, it's absorbed what it could absorb. But what it didn't absorb, which is now it's coming back to you, it's it, beginning to smell a nice... Boom! That's I, I actually wrote the words boom. boom. I, you get a boom. You don't want it. It comes back to you in the form of a boom. Your eye, your eye now, your eye now takes the boom and says, oh, the boom goes to your brain, and your brain says, oh, you don't like what you just saw? Let me change it for you. I'm putting it in simple it terms. Like a coping mechanism. It is. It's right. trying to soothe. It's trying to soothe you. It's trying to say you don't like what you see. Let me now change it around for you and reconstruct it for you. Maybe you'll like it differently now. That's how I see the whole mindfulness. You know, 
uh, therapy or whatever. I look at it as like a denial. Right. You're, you're in this 19 whatever 89 car mm -hmm. and mindfulness is teaching you to look at it in a positive way. Right? Which really you're just lying to yourself. You know, it's unless you keep, you're right, unless you put in the soul aspect of Hashem. If mindfulness and all these beautiful shitas psycho psychologically, if they're not ta uh, taught in the Ruach yeah. of Amuna, which is why this, the, particularly these energy workshops, I teach it in the Ruach of Amuna. Yeah. Unless you put Hashem in there, you're right. I could say, I forgive that person, I forgive that person. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? You can talk to your blue in the face. Unless you put in some sort of a grandier pur purpose that Hashem subjected you to this particular person and he wants you to forgive because it's better for you and the rest of the world it's gonna be really hard for you to go against your own human instincts and conditions and saying but that person's not deserving of my forgiveness you have to go above yourself so that's you understand again i just want you to, to understand i used it in the form of the color but it really teaches us about behavioral mood reaction I have to ask the same Hashem says it to you in a different way. And you're saying you have to do it. Like what I'm saying to you is that basically when you're not happy, let's put it very simple. When, uh, when you're, uh, put it on an Amuna perspective. When you see something that you're not happy with in your life, then what you're doing by you rejecting it, it's actually sending a message of, uh, to uh, basically to Hashem. Um, you don't like it? Fine. I'll flip things around, which could mean, by the way, that it says specifically that when um, uh, uh, what is that exact that pasuk? There's a pasuk that says that if you call everything in your life teva, nature, then I'm going to show you your your whole life is going to be everything's going to be led by teva. Everything's going to be led by nature. In other words, if you are, Hashem is saying to me, if you don't want to see me, if you don't want to see the goodness of what I'm giving you, and you're rejecting me then I'm going to just let the realms of Teva take over your life and I'll flip things around for you so that everything will be run. I'll be Teva on natural terms without my interference because you don't like what I have to give you. What happens when you, don't, when you give to your child something and they don't like and they keep rejecting? rejecting how many times are you going to offer it to them? Over and over and over again. How much times are you going to How many times can you like something? Let's say you were, you were teaching at the car and you're liking it for one year, two years, three years, four years. And then, you know, it gets harder, the car. it gets harder, it gets harder, it gets harder and harder and harder with every passing. You're right. right. Absolutely. In the beginning, you could do it. And I'm not because telling you, they, they say that as the Nisayon drags out, yeah. it gets harder. I'm not telling you no, but it's still, that's also part of the Nisayon. Right. So I, um, I hope it was the case really quick for going through time. The whole car thing, it's just a reminder. Mm. It's just the car thing. Quick, quick, quick. 12 years, uh, 14 years ago, 14 to Israel, I had bought myself a brand new Cherokee. I've been working as a teacher for 10 years, and I took money back and I bought this car. I got married a year after I bought it. This, uh, a month after I came to Israel, my husband gave me some of the They They totaled the car. I knew that I was never going to see it wow. the car again. It was, and I feel like the chef put me in a place that you want to throw a life. You have to give something. I still got accepted. It was so hard. I was very accepting of it. And I came to Israel, and we got one beat up car to another. I mean, Shema wasn't even wow. so my, my brother in law bought us the cars. I didn't even have to like do anything. And I had to really search and see Hashem in this thing because all of a sudden you have this, like, you know, hey, what are you doing to drive around this car? Right? Wow. Are you kidding? In this color, at least let me take the color. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got me into remembering and, another and car story for like, me. Hashem took me, took that area of my life. It was pretty like, you know, like a part of a guide with me, you know, of like having this nice house to live in. So it really just peeled me away, peel it away, yes. peel it away. And year after year, and car after car, and I didn't see a car anymore. I, I just saw Hashem and everything that, you know, and, and, and it's like just his, his presence and, and, and the put to have a car and his row and right. all these things. And about less than a year ago, making a very long story short, not even five months ago, you know, my husband, our cars were breaking down. We had two cars, so they're like, break, like cars were breaking down all the time. And my husband and said that his brother wants to give us another car. And I'm like, and I was very crazy on the car. And, like, okay, whatever. and my husband had an issue out of this car. And I just, if, if you need a car, if I have my little beat up, I know how it 
time. Right. I know what's going to break down. I know what's going to stop at the turn on it. I just leave me with this car. I'm okay with it. And he made a big deal. And I didn't say why. And, and it was like a Thursday. And if I have to shut and say, what's the biggest? I'm going to go get the car. Enjoy it. I have my car. You get your car. We're fine. I got my Jeep back. Yeah. What? Oh, that's amazing. The same one. Well, he is. You think for the yeah, I got a Jeep, a, a nice Jeep. Oh, oh, another. She got <laughs> a replacement, not the same one. Nice, and I, I remember going up and saying, "What's the car?" I want to just look at the kids to sleep. I want to take a ride. I want to just put the kids to sleep. Like, I didn't know what car he's talking about. Right. Like, why are you making a big deal out of this car? Wow, he that's amazing. Fell. He felt like that's that, like, amazing. I should have just made a full circle. Yeah. Right. So from the Hachna. It was yeah. from the acceptance. That's again, that was the yeah. acceptance. That the was the acceptance. And all of a sudden, they're sure they have a fine shape. I'm telling you, this is like, you know, three, four days. And and I just look. And when I went in the car, I'm like, I can't drive this car. I can't drive this car. I'm like, I can't drive it. Wow. And it took me friend after friend. They were told me this Ashgaha story that it should just break the back. You know, he just wants you to feel wow. yourself and say, I don't need this car for me. You know? I mean, that's what it is. This is all that. So here, that that's what we were just saying. That's the message. That was the message. So so I'm gonna tell another oh, this is a small little story that, that I have to say. And I this is one of my um, Aliyah stories, right? So uh, for many many years, I wanted to make Aliyah when I was living in Muncie. I kept telling my husband, "That's it. We've got to make we're made back." You know, my daughter, she's she, she was reaching her near the end of high school. I said, "That's it. She's gonna marry someone in America. We're gonna be stuck." I said, no, we can't be stuck. I know she's going to marry an American guy, and I'm not going to leave her. I'm not going to leave my little Kindle children. And, and you got to get us. We got to meet her an Israeli guy. We've got to get her out. I mean, really, that was my mindset amongst a million other things that I saw and I felt. You talk about energy. Like, I felt I needed to be out of there. And we were going through one of the, the ultimate breakdown of our financial situation. Let's put it this way. Whatever financial empire we had was broken at that point. Our house was in foreclosure. I lost my job, a fire in my business. I mean, my whole life story was like a crazy story. Anyway, I remember at one point, my husband declares in front of me, he says, listen to me. He says, I don't think he minds, right? You don't mind, honey, that I'm telling the story. He says, I'm not going back to Israel and can only afford, afford to buy a clunky little car. For all I know, I'm going to be driving up the castell, right? The big Ali Adi Rishalayim, and my car is going to break down. I don't want a kind of car like that. I want a car. I'm going back to Israel after 20 years of not living here. Let me have at least a decent car. Sure enough, we make Aliyah. And all we can afford is a very little clinky dinky car. Sorry, that's what we can afford. And sure enough, not two months passed. My husband's driving into Yerushalayim, going up the car sale. Shoo! The car starts steaming up, and they have to wait on the side of the car sale for four hours until you know, the Israeli AAA, whatever it is, comes in and rescues our beautiful car. So, and, and again, so you could say, we could say, and yes, of course, I can look back. It's humorous after nine years. It wasn't humorous in 100 degree weather and the Costello that day. Of course not. But when really um, they say it's the, the, the exact science of life, of life is hindsight, is when you can look back and you mm -hmm. could say, I can see how that would happen to me. Like you said, there's a level of hachna'a. It was a, le a level of understanding and acceptance that we needed to achieve in coming to Eretz Yisrael. You should listen to the class, really, that I gave last, year, last week on Eretz Yisrael and what it means to live here. You, should, you know, and, and, and the, the, what happens to a person when you live here in this country, that if you understand the spiritual makeup and the spiritual price that you pay but also get from living in this country, you understand that all this is all part of the reward that you get. But to live if, here in Israel. What if you don't like the energy there? What if you don't like living with your neighbor and your faith and you prefer the suburb? You have to listen to last week's. You really, really need to listen to last week's class. Where You'll be able it? to on tour anytime on YouTube, well, like on our website. Huh? That's the rejection slide that you said. Yeah. So I'm just going to say on a very quick note everywhere that Torah um, writes the word Geula in the Torah, there it follows either immediately or within the next Pasuk, the word Eretz Yisrael, like it refers to Eretz. There is no Geula without Eretz Yisrael. 
There's no, it's not possible to even achieve a gulat nefesh. I'm not talking about geula shlema, which God willing, whether that's the ultimate. We're talking about geula in general. Any form of geula cannot be, I'm sorry, please no tomatoes at me this time over the camera, <laughs> but you cannot achieve any geula unless you're in Eretz, Eretz Yisrael. It's just not possible. And, and the Torah says it, it's known that the geula the is connected. I say any type of geula, any type of true geula. I didn't say that you can't be happy anywhere else. I'm talking about true soul redemption, true soul. Re I know I'm going to ask, ask should, should I reword that? Because I know everyone's going to say so. Uh, true soul redemption on a very, on a massive communal, I'm trying to paint the words as best as I can. Because I want everyone to come back. Please, it's not going to die. Right, right. This has nothing to do with color therapy. It's coloring Israel. But, but it really, it's connected to Eretz Yisrael. So why am I saying it? I always say, if we have a problem with Eretz Yisrael, it means there's a problem in my nefesh. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not connecting to Eretz Yisrael with all the difficulties, and, the and I'm not telling you it's not here, it is not easy to live here. I didn't say it's not. Yeah. But you can achieve great heights here that you cannot achieve anywhere else. Because we're, as Letzara, uh, uh, oh, I forgot the name, uh, uh oh, mm -hmm. the the agla, right? As in, in accordance to the difficulty comes the reward. Okay, the reward, geula shlema, geula geula tenefesh, geula shlema. Of course, in neolama ba. So it's not easy again, but at least to want to live here. That's what I'm trying to to get to. Is many of us, and I said this last week, many of us can't. Those of us in America, we think they're not in America, South Africa, wherever we are. Some people can't. It, it, obviously, there's a tikkun everywhere that we need to all be doing. But to not want to be here is, is a totally different level. It's one thing not to have the possibility, maybe a wife wants, a husband doesn't. Obviously, there are many circumstances that would stop somebody from living here. And, and, and they have their own tikkun. Nobody says there's nothing. But to not want to be here or to be here and not want to be here, that, that requires what we call a biruha nefesh, that you have to go within your nefesh and see what is it that I'm rejecting really here. There's a part of my own nefesh that I'm rejecting. But to, to live in chutzlaris, but to really want to be here, that's already achieving the level of at least the geula on that level is that you want to be here. And, I, and you got a lot of hate mail? Actually, I got so much love mail last week. I actually did get a lot... Um, you know what, even those who live in Kutah, they didn't, I don't think anyone addressed the Eretz Yisrael part. They, they addressed the Havahaf de Lareach HaKamocha, the beginning part of the Shir. I didn't hear anything about the rest. Listen, between me and you, everyone knows what, what I'm speaking. It's not me. It's the, the truth. It's absolute truth. So I don't think many people can actually say that what I'm saying is, it's, it's, uh, it's really not, it's not my words. These are really Chazal's words. That you have to want to at least be in Eretz Yisrael. Again, no, you're, you're not, whatever, obviously, there are tikkunim it's that need to be done. Than, it's one of the missions that you yeah. have to keep. But, yeah, but, no, but, and if you can, but, the one, it's not one of the missions. No, but you can't, no, you can't fulfill all of the mitzvahs. Part of the mitzvahs are only to believe in Eretz Yisrael. Okay, so can, nobody in the world, so you I have to listen to that. Listen to that. The half the reha kamocha. So again, we could go back to last week's class that I spoke about, how you can, that's exactly what I said. How can you fulfill what we spoke about that? Right, so that's, that was, that was uh, definitely. It. Okay, so what this really teaches us is this, and here's where I want to sort of close the whole idea of the car and everything that we've learned, is that basically everything is colorless. The world, the world is a colorless place. It's only the, the colors are given to us only through the rejection that it doesn't receive from the actual, actual physical structure of the item itself. However well you understand that, you understand. It's not a science class. You don't have to understand the scientific, you know, the, 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 the physics of what I'm saying. You don't have, we're not physicists here. We're not in a biochemistry class to understand the atomic structure. What I just am trying to bring out is that basically life is parv. 
Life is parv. Your perception, your projected awareness of life, it depends on what it is that you accept or reject in your life. That's, that's really the end result of the class. After an hour of talking about this, that, that's the point I wanted to bring across through the idea of how we perceive color, even something as beautiful as a pink flower, a red rose, the green grass. This is how we project it. And so it's, it's really about how I choose to see and accept and absorb that which is given to me in my life. That, that's, that's the bottom line. And so how did I, what was the nuance of tying the three weeks? Is that essentially the three weeks is all about changing our perception of our neighbor, of ourselves, of, our, of the galut versus geula. And one of the fascinating exercises that we could do in learning, um, I hope we'll get to learning some of the characteristics of some of the colors. If not, maybe next week we'll do part two. We might have to do part two of this class then next week because we really didn't get to any of the stuff that I really wanted to talk about. Um, but in, in a, you can literally take an instance in your life, could close your eyes, and you could paint it depending on the quality of the color that you want to bring in, the attribute that you're trying to inject in the situation. And I'll give you just a, a little taste of an example. Let's just say you're confused about something. You don't understand something in life. You don't understand how could that person do, or how could it be that, right? You, we all, you find ourselves, I do, am I the only one that asks that question? I seem to say that quite often. How is it that? I don't ask the whys. I've, I've graduated, tried to graduate from the why. Now I just say, how is it that? Or, or what is it that? Right? We graduated to some degree with the, you know, what, where, when, how, and why, and the how. And if, so if there's something that you don't understand in life, you can go into a quiet space in your mind, close your eyes, and the color for clarity and opening up a greater sense of intellect is the color blue. Because blue is the color of the spira. It's, it's offset of blue, but let's just say blue is the offset of the color of the spira of chokhmah. Like blue, dark blue. So, so here again, it's really what? The sky, yeah. right? That's yeah. why spirit, they say you want to have your rachamayim, you want to have clarity, you want to have a moon. Look, go out to your merpeset, go out to a panoramic view, take a look at the spectrum of the sky, and the blue that you will see will be able to open up your mind to the grass vastness, not only of Hashem, but also give you chokhmah. It'll give you a great level of, of intellect. So you could take, let's say, just say, um, I don't understand why my neighbors decided two o'clock in the morning to bang and decide to do reconstruction of their house at two in the morning. So I'm going to now take that picture and close my eyes and see the neighbors banging on the wall at two in the morning. And I'm going to paint the picture literally in a blue color. I'm going to give a backdrop or maybe put a blue cloud around them or make a a, a blue easel around. Ah, we changed the color. How beautiful. Um, but literally, I will paint that scenario with, um, with also taking the word chokhmah. Listen to this. You take the word chokhmah, the chet, the chaf, the mem, and the hey. You paint it on the projection of your mind of the scenario in blue onto that projection of the thing you can't understand. And as you center yourself with the blueness around you, you can open your energy lines. You can open yourself up to a greater level of intellectual understanding of what, what Hashem is trying to possibly send you. This is, by the way, according to the Ramak. The Ramak says, when you want to absorb and draw down abundance in Pardes Arimonim, Shagvanim, the, the gate of shades, um, the Pardes Arimonim is the the, the Orchard of Pomegranates. That's, that's the name of the book, Rabbi Moshe Kaldevel. And he writes there and he says, if you want to draw down abundance into your life, you should go to the, to the sphera from which you want to draw down the abundance. We, you learn about the colors, because each sphera root has its color. Now that doesn't mean that that sphera is that color. It just, it's a projection of what Hashem, how Hashem gives us the avenue to be able to receive some of the abundance of that shefa, of that sphera, of the uh, sphere as an energy channel, right? And you take and paint in your mind's eye 
against the background of what it is that you want to receive that sphera, the name of the sphera in the Hebrew letters, in the color of that sphera. And that's how you're able to draw down through your mind's eye, through the power of imagination, which we go into a lot in the energy workshops too of other Torah sources of power of the imagination, is you can draw down and you can literally change energetically the way that you perceive and the way you, the way you receive and transmit to others the situation. So it's remarkable how colors really have an amazing healing aspect to be able to use. And Hashem gave it to us. Hashem gave us the ability to use color so that we can um, uh, benefit from it, use it to enlighten, to release, to release the blockages, to enhance our connection to ourselves and, and greater acceptance and, and greater joy and, and taste a little of the gula through the colors. So I'll give you another example, the color green. The color green is the um, color of clarity. It's a color of balance. It's a color of renewal. Ah, we're changing colors. I love this. It's just like so real time. And so let's just say it's also the color, by the way, of peace. Okay? Green. green. Yes, it's the color of peace. Yes, harmony, balance, mm -hmm. shalom. Yes. Oh, green peace. That's right. I never thought about that. Right. Yeah, no, it's not for nothing. Really, it's not for nothing. Absolutely. The world... They have green, but they have other colors too. They have red, blood. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think it is a really little, yeah. So, so for instance, by the way, there's a reason I said this, I say this in the class too. There's a reason why NYPD blue, right? Blue is a color that's a color protection. When I see blue, I feel protected. It does. Right. So I feel like this person is smart and is wise and is intellectual and he can protect me. He has the means and the wits to protect me. Exactly. So, so there's a reason why. There's a reason why in the hospital they use certain colors, right? There's a reason why the emojis are yellow, right? There's a reason why McDonald's are red and yellow. You think the marketing world out there don't know what entices, what, in, what makes you salivate, what colors make you salivate. What colors entice you and make you feel secure enough to invest in their business? Logos have colors. Everything has colors. Why? They send this a signaling message into my life. They know very well what, what to use, right? So, so for instance, with green. So the green is, is the color. Again, think about the vast of the, of the grass and, and the colors of the trees, right? You feel the sense of renewal and, and, and newness flowing into your life. So if that's the color of peace, then chas v'shalom, there's a place of machloket. Again, you want to bring to mind the machloket, and then you want to wrap it. And again, from an energy perspective, we learn in the energy workshops how to take the situation and literally wrap an energy cloud around the situation in the color and make it settle down on the situation and stay there until the projected image in your mind through the power of thought, that's, what, that's how energy medicine works, with the power of thought and focused intent, you send out the, the message of green, wholesome, harmony, shalom, and peace into that situation so that, again, you could literally change the way that you transmit to others the way you perceive certain things. You want to begin to love someone then maybe you're gonna take that person, you're gonna wrap them in pink. Imagine seeing someone that you really don't like. And I wrap them in lots of green dollars, huh? No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's, so, so, so orange is the color of abundance. Orange is the color of like all social openness. It's a very, very strong stimulating color. I don't know, maybe you want to put in some, inject some orange in there, you know, infuse some orange into them. But what, what we'll talk, I think we're going to, the class is, is what? So I think, I think we're going to actually do part two of this next week and go into the, also the meditation next week and go into, now that we went through the psychology of the colors, I think we gave ourselves enough to think about anyway. But, but the bottom line is, again, it's a very, very powerful and very meaningful and there are high end spiritual roots there's a reason, and there are plenty of places in the Torah, it says, right? Tolata, tolata Shani, which is a crimson color. There's the reason why um, uh, the blue, right, on the tzitzit. Everything has, right? Everything has its specifics in the colors. There's obviously certain emotions and reactions 
that are injected from inside of me that sends messages. And here we learn just a little bit about it, of how the brain really receives the color and what it does to it. It really does create, I'll just give a, just something small, just so you can taste a little bit of what colors do. So the, everything that we spoke about, the idea that everything has a structural, molecular, um, atomic structure, right? These molecules, molecules are a bunch of atoms put together, okay? So these molecule structures, when they're put together in a certain, they're bonded. They're bonded through the divine force and intellectual force that tells them stay like this, orbit like this, have so many electrons, have so many protons, have so many new, new, uh, new, uh, neutrons. And so it creates different forms. That's how we get different matter forms. That's how come we have a table looking like this and a cup looking, a cup looking like this. And the, the reason why you have different shapes, is it depends on the, the, the atomic and molecular, molecular structure of the, of the atom. I, I know, okay, everyone's looking like, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't quite understand 100%, but anyway. So if you have a certain structure, what happens? As the light, as light, we said, hits it, the light will do one of two things. It'll either excite the atoms inside that physical matter object thing, or it'll cause it to break it apart. So, so there are certain uh, the colors, certain colors either will create a sensation within our own bodies of tearing apart, excite it, create motion, or deaden it. That's because color is light. Light is energy. As we receive and we look at light, we're getting, we're sending messages, messages being sent into our body to either get excited, calm down, go to sleep, be spiritual, have more clarity, feel protected, be in fear, be happy. All of these messages come to us because there are actual biochemical changes that are going on in the body as we're looking at different colors. So there's a reason why you want to paint your house in a certain color. You wanna have certain textures and colors in your home. And there's certain things, and we speak about this again, I wanna encourage, one of the things I would love to do is to encourage everyone to sign up to the workshops, but that's some of the things we speak about is if you want to, for instance, um, you know, a child, for instance, really has some ADD issues. You definitely do not want to put any red going on in the visual, per, per, uh, peripheral vision of that child. Because the red is the stimulant, the uh, excitement, the over, you know, over uh, aggressive, yeah, color that's around. It's, uh, it's red and then there's orange, there's yellow, there's all these, they're very, they're stimulant. You want to give them more the, the greens and the, the purples and you know the light baby soft colors you want it you want to literally maybe put a vase in their room and literally have them or be careful of the the night light that you put down you also when they go to sleep you know a lot of us sleep with a night light and and they 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 do so wrong that they give us these night lights that are like white shining or they're even blue does everyone know that you're not supposed to see blue when you're going to bed you're not supposed to see blue. The color of your screen in your phone. So, so blue, blue, what does it tell your body? It's, it's daylight. So when, that's one of the reasons why if nobody has it, they should definitely um, uh, install on their phones what's called a blue filter application. So that from 7 p.m. or from 6 p.m., this you can time it. The application automatically shuts down the blue lead coloring on the phone or on your computer so that you don't get in the blue light and radiating light from the phone. Why do you think people have such problems sleeping? They go to bed with this blue light shining. You don't see the blue, but blue inf infiltrates into your system, your computer, right? And then you wonder, because your body is getting the message, it's daytime. So that's why you should put like an iridescent. Ooh, darkness, like midnight blue, dark, or the blues. That's, but that's not. Right, right. They're feeling the blues. They don't feel. Right. Blue. They don't feel but blue from, from the body's perspective, when the, I'm talking about seeing, I'm not talking about feeling. 
talking about, I see why feeling the blues, we'll learn no, about that no, next week. I mean, right, no, no, I understand. But here we're talking about bio, uh, literally biochemical reaction in your body. When your body sees blue, it thinks it's daylight, right? You don't see blue on the sky at night. It doesn't look blue. It's right, it has a different color to it. it you, at least you perceive it as being a different color. So when you have a night light and it's shining you blue or you're looking at your phone and it's giving you blue light, it's sending you the message, time to still be awake. No matter how tired you feel that you really are, that's what your message, the message of your body is giving. <laughs> that's, you know what, that's true, but going to bed, it's not good. So if you could change the color, I should probably change. Right, right, on the phone, right, right, right. But again, you could put the application in. I have a blue light applicator application on my phone and on my computer and it'll automatically from six o'clock I can see the screen turn a different color like it becomes the shade the blue comes down it becomes more yellow it becomes more you know more calm to say no no but it's a dull it's a dullness it's a dullness it's totally dull color you'll see you'll see if you look on the uh, on on your computer and you, you see what I'm talking about you'll notice the clear 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 difference Okay, so we didn't talk about almost anything that I actually planned, but the good thing is we do have another class next Tuesday, right? No, no, this is, the, yeah, we're, today is Wednesday, next week we'll do Tuesday. Oh, we're not here. No, this is, that's the 10th. Right, right. Right. So, yeah, no, we did on Tuesday last week. Yeah, the only reason I did on Wednesday because I couldn't last night. I personally couldn't last night. I was attending another class in New line. But uh, but next week we're back. We'll usually only do Tuesday. What? Yeah, this coming up Tuesday we'll do class number two. We'll finish. We'll finish this because there's a lot more. I also want to put us through a meditation and uh, actually be able to. I want you to be able to feel the effects of, of the different colors. Okay, so it's me and Shemai. We were going to talk with everybody. What I'm saying is all colors are either from the rainbow. Or, or combinations thereof, like colors, right? You know, you have black and white, which is not the rainbow, and so where does that fit in? Well, so I know that the stones, I always think of the ocean, the stones yeah, right. have reasons, and they're yes. black. I want them this black. Yes, uh, black onyx, right, black, it's so right. Black. Right, so, right, right, right. And I always feel like, I know that there's something about, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there was something about Absolutely. those stones are what it's supposed to be. Right, that's a whole Torah in and of itself. No, I'm also with the cult, I'm thinking also there was certain energy that has to be. Like oh, for sure. Again, so the like, colors also could give off. Could have been another color stone, I shouldn't say that. But the colors also give off, again, the uh, the different energies. The colors themselves give off that's the different energies. I'm trying to put black and white come in. Again, when next week we're going to learn the actual qualities of each one of the colors and we'll get a better idea. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry we didn't get through the class, but obviously, Mina Shamai, this is what.